Well, here it is. <laughs> the, uh, the escape is done. We have a registration sticker now for uh, inspection. We are registered, we are insured, and we are clean. Oh, as clean as we can get with this car. You can see where the person, the previous driver, was resting their arm here for a quarter million miles. Uh, let's step out though and uh, check out the exterior. As you can see, no more wrap. No good. We've got some really crappy uh, window tenting done here. I'll need to remove. Uh, we are rocking the. Uh, the Michelin XI3, 17, uh, 70 inch wheels and tires. And we have our August 2019 registration done. It's already dirty even though it was washed three days ago. And uh, this window is now put on. So this is the, uh, oh, I need to, oh, let's just wrap. This is the, the stock window. You can see some of the the crop, the gunk there. Uh, that's just because they, um, well, the glass company, basically my employer yanked this off to put a metal plate in there. Hi everyone. And um, when I got it back, it was just covered in all kinds of gunk. So the glass company said they couldn't guarantee it wouldn't leak, but uh, if it does leak, then I can always go on eBay and just buy a remanufactured one and they'll stick it in. Um, I'm gonna, basically the goal is to head home and give you guys like a whole update uh, in front of the camera of what I've spent so far getting this thing roadworthy. Not that it really matters to any of you because most of you aren't gonna buy a quarter million mile uh, car, but it does kind of matter to me just to have that detailed. And there's still more to do. I want to replace the uh, the turn signals and the brake lights and the reverse lights with LEDs so, they can, so I can um, have a bit more visibility. I kind of like when I'm coming to a stop, people actually see me. These are 60 bucks a pop. I need to replace these on both sides. It's holding on for now, but that's 60 bucks. Uh, there's a couple more things that I just want to do with it, but overall, she's done. I did put um, new wiper blades on. These are brand new, Ford branded. For some reason, I went on Ford for the maintenance stuff. I should have done aftermarket or you know third party. Um, WeatherTech ripoffs, which don't quite fit accurately, but they do the job. Um, I also ordered some seat covers which aren't in yet. And then we have a, a guard for the back as well that I grabbed. The only thing left to do really, you can see the gunk here by the way in the window. Uh, I screwed in the seat myself yesterday. The seat was not bolted down, so that's done now. And then I have this thing here. The only thing left to do would be to get a couple of basic uh, fix a flat things back here like um, you know, the jack for the car, which is a missing uh, air compressor, that kind of stuff, a plug kit. Um, but yeah, very, very clean. But yeah, again, like LEDs for the brake lights. See, these are bulbs. The LEDs for these and the turn signals and LED internal lights, just so I have a little bit better visibility in and out. Um, but yeah, she's done. So this is our winter beater project, which not many people, you can see all kind of the vinyl wrap is just kind of whatever, but there's not many 2015 Ford Escapes that people would say are winter beaters. But that is the situation with me. Um, the only left bit major uh, uh, repair left to do is that I need to replace the valve cover gasket. And I'll actually make a video about that. Um, it's a leaking, so I'll do that in a separate video. But let's um, let's head home. I'll fire up the camera and uh, I'll go over all the receipts I have so far with all the maintenance work that we've done to the car. All right, so I got all the receipts here. We've added it all up. I have, we, I. Um, the 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 get on the road price. So uh, there's no such thing as a thousand dollar car. Um, you know, anytime that you buy a used vehicle, you there's a few associated costs with this. Uh, you know, if you have three thousand dollars in your checking account and the car is twenty nine ninety nine, uh, and you pay twenty nine ninety nine, you can't then just you know trust that everything is done correctly to it, nor can you uh, put it on the road legally. So there's a lot of things you have to do. Um, and I, I probably should go through all these. There's lots of videos online on how, how this works. Maybe I should drop this down a little bit. But um, there we go. 
But like, for example, um, let's say that you look at the tread of the tires and they look fine. There are DOT uh, born on dates for tires that are on all the tires. Uh, you may need to plug it into the DOT website to figure out the actual date it was manufactured. But it's been a few years, um, then you may be in for trouble because you've got an old tire. So tread does not mean the tire's fine, for example. Uh, another one could be, you know, uh, uh, rusting away um, suspension components, steering components. Those kind of things are, um, are important. So when buying a used car, uh, always, you know, feel free to give the person cash, uh, but then take it to a dealership and get a PPI done or a pre-purchase inspection. You're going to pay an hour of labor, which was in my case, $109 even for a pre-purchase inspection. Unfortunately, my vehicle was um, take it or leave it. There was no driving it off site. There was no even starting the car. We had to just basically pick one and take it away. That was how we did our, our program. That's why it was so cheap. So pre-purchase inspection is first. Uh, make sure the tires are good, uh, brakes are good, suspension components are good. All the fluids need to be checked. Uh, in my situation, I always change all the fluids. So back to my original point, um, the difference thing is a hundred dollar car or a thousand dollar car. Um, so the all-in price I've actually spent for this is about thirty-two hundred dollars. That's that's everything. Um, that I needed to get the car roadworthy. I probably could have saved myself 1200. So, you know, of that of that money, uh, so 2000 even, had I not done, uh, paid someone to remove the vinyl wrap, do the goo be gone on the exterior that while the adhesive was there, I'm getting a ton of emails, uh, and also do an interior detailing that was felt it like a smoker car. Um, and then also replace the, the tires. So I probably could have saved actually $1,200 had I not done uh, tires or detailing um, at a professional shop. If I let the tires as is, it would have been a safety issue because they were, they were not old tires, they had 30,000 miles on them. Uh, and then B, if I you know, braved the cold and gotten frostbite in order to do the detailing myself, that would have saved me a lot of money. Um, okay, getting off tropic here. So 800 bucks out the door for the car. Uh, then we went to Tire Rack and we spent uh, 583 on four brand new Michelin XI3s. $100 of that I get right back in my pocket through a uh, rebate in six to 12 weeks. And then um, we took it to uh, the tire shop and I gave them, the tire shop got for me $76 to uh, mount and balance the four tires as well as dispose the other ones for $10. So that was done. Uh, then I went over to the glass company and uh, I paid them 150 to install the um, OEM glass that was on the vehicle, uh, off the vehicle where we had mounting, uh, mounted camera equipment to it. So I bought hit the glass. They could not guarantee the glass would not leak because uh, of how much goo was on it. It wasn't professionally removed initially. It was just kind of pried off. So if it does leak, I'll need to buy a remanufactured quarter panel for like two, 200 bucks and have them once again spend 150 to install it. Then today I went to another tire shop who had availability to uh, uh, align, do an alignment, four wheel alignment for $90. And just if you guys are curious, that's our, our alignment spec sheet. Uh, overall, you know, they, got, they were able to get everything within um, specifications, which is good. But they um, they did fine. I mean, it was it was definitely uh, in need of an alignment. It was pulling hard to the left, I think. Um, but everything's good now. Uh, and they charged me also fifty nine dollars for a New Hampshire state inspection, for which it passed without any problems at all. And then uh, I went over to my town office to get the car registered. So I gave them a two twenty five forty to register it. Uh, for the town, and then I gave them an additional um, 65 40 for the, no, sorry, sorry. I gave the town 160 and the state 65 40 for a total of 225.40 uh, to register this thing in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, last year, my employer who registered the car spent um, 230 plus 43. So they actually spent uh, quite a bit more last year when the car was newer. It goes down every year in New Hampshire. 
Uh, we don't have sales tax here, so that's why our registrations are fairly high for new vehicles. And then um, that's that stuff. And then at Ford, I spent, I paid them um, 109 to do a PPI. Uh, they noticed that the uh, rear passenger shock was leaking, uh, but it's a small seepage, no no big deal until springtime, which is nice to hear. They checked uh, belts, hoses, filters, battery connections, battery. Uh, looked for all items that would be brought up during a Hampshire State inspection. They checked the brakes. They checked uh, suspension components, and they say car is in good shape. I paid them eighty nine ninety five to do an interior detailing, which is a shampoo wash and all the seats and interior. Uh, they did not use Armor All on my request. They cleaned it up pretty good, and they got most of the smoke smell smell out of there. And then for one seventeen seventy six, they they changed the flat transmission fluid and inspected. Uh, did a test ride. Um, transmission is about. 50 to 75 percent gone so i've got another 25,000 miles roughly on this transmission before i need to change it according to them they, they couldn't guarantee that uh i paid them 327 to completely remove the wrap uh, i went to pick up a car on monday today's wednesday and the wrap was still on the roof so it was cracked black uh it was black and it was cracking um and they didn't charge any more money they basically said it was a flat fee so they went back and they did that without any additional uh fees so in total, I spent to Ford six fifty three seventy one for really one maintenance item, um, which was the transmission fluid, which I couldn't do myself without a special tool uh, to check everything on the car for me, and then uh, do the interior detailing and the wrap removal. To uh, Amazon, I spent one hundred forty eight dollars on oil filter, air filter, cabin air filter, spark plugs, and windshield wiper fluid. Um, all of that stuff was done myself, so no labor there. I spent two forty-seven for floor mats, seat covers, rear storage mat, and mud guards. I think I'm gonna get seventy back because I'm returning those um, seat covers. They didn't work, so that's really like I don't know one seventy instead. All that stuff, and then the um, that's it, right? Oh, and then um, about three sixty to three eighty for my insurance coverage for 12 months. Uh, and I have pretty good insurance coverage. I don't, everyone says full coverage. There's no thing as full coverage. Uh, you know, there, there, there's not, that doesn't exist. But, um, you know, I have the, I'm in the top 95% of insured. In fact, many uh, financial people would say I'm overinsured because my uh, my coverage exceeds um, my, my uh, value as a human being, I guess, uh, on the tax bracket. But I'm overinsured, and uh, but I, I don't want to ever have a problem where I owe someone millions of dollars for um, something like that. So total price uh, about thirty three hundred dollars, I guess, is what I came around to. I'm, I'm not doing the math in real time here. Now thirty three hundred dollars for a two hundred fifty thousand mile car is starting to get into like eh, territory. Uh, here's the deal. Uh, Nada and KVB agree this is a four thousand dollar car, nine thousand dollars if it has a hundred thousand miles on it. But uh, when you add it to hundred thousand miles to two hundred fifty thousand miles, that drops from nine thousand to four thousand in decent shape, not excellent shape. Um, so the car is worth four k. You know we're put it on Craigslist today. So first of all, I couldn't have purchased this car for a thousand dollars anywhere without serious damage, and there's no body damage at all except a little bit of um, you know front fender bits. Um, especially a $250,000 mile car in New Hampshire that capacity inspection is just not possible, especially a 2015 model year with Bluetooth and rear and your back camera and stuff. And then finally, a lot of these expenses would have kicked in on any used car. That's why I started the video this way because you know, no matter what I paid for the vehicle, I would have had to detail the inside to get any nasty smells out of it. And this had no kids in the backseat. This, the, there was only one person driving this car so all the seats were good, all the floors were good. There was no, you know, everything but the driver's side was in great condition. Um, I would have had to get the vinyl mount wrap removed depending on who I bought it from. Um, I would have had to put four new tires on anyway because it came with all seasons and I don't run all seasons in the winter time. And I would have just best practices done an alignment and would have changed all the fluids and had a PPI done. So when you look at this, the, the inspection cost of like 250, uh, or the, the registration of 250 inspection of $59, 148 for fluids, uh, 583 for tires, um, you know, $100 for alignment. 
you're, you're looking at like $1,500 anyway that you should spend if you're gonna purchase a used car at any level, unless that car has like 500 miles on it. If the car has over 50,000 miles on it, you should plan on spending $1,500 to register, insure, get all the maintenance up to date, never take ownership of a car or a motorcycle and trust that the oil was done um, less than whatever the manufacturer recommends. Just do it and then create your own Excel file and start tracking the miles from fresh right now because then you'll know it was done. There's no doubt about it how long you had the oil in there uh, after buying it. So, and I know I, I'm kind of a little bit aggressive here, but I think a lot of people will just, just think, hey, I got five grand, let me go buy a used car and then we just drive it and then all of a sudden it dies 18 months into ownership. I wonder why. Well, I never had a PPI done. I never changed the oil because I only, only drive, I drive 10,000, I live just less 10,000 miles. And of course, the last owner must have just changed the oil before I bought it. Um, and oh no, I don't have enough money to register and inspect it and get it insured. Like, so anyway, kind of rambling it now. But uh, all in, 3,300 bucks to buy a 2015 Ford Escape. That is my winter beater. Uh, the next video you guys will see will be the uh, valve gasket repair. And let's hope that you won't see any more videos about this car until springtime when I put it up on uh, blocks and change the um, the uh, the rear shock. You always change shocks in pairs. So I'll change both of the rear shocks. The springs look immaculate. Uh, I may change the tie rod ends and I may look at changing the lower control arms for the front, um, maybe. But the front shocks and springs are good. Um, the last thing I'm not quite sure of is the the, the steering rack and pinion were done like 100,000 miles ago, but there's like, it looks like Ford didn't do it. it I mean, there's literally like an exposed bolt down the front floorboard. It gave me a little bit of heebie-jeebies, so I may do that preemptively anyway. But I'm looking at roughly spending, um, with registration, with insurance, uh, and maintenance, about $1,000 a year to keep this car on the road before fuel cost. And um, until I need new tires, that is the plan. So um, if I can keep it under that, and that means roughly four fifty to five hundred dollars a year in in in, uh, in parts to keep the car on the road, if I can do that, that's going to be fantastic, and I'll keep it as long as it runs. Uh, thanks for watching. I know this is a long video, but I'm really excited. Uh, I've wanted a winter beater for a long time. Ever since I took delivery of the Golf R that winter, uh, three months late after buying it, I said to Heather, "I really need a winter car," and I finally have one. And now the Golf R with 40,000 miles on it after three and a half years is uh, already starting to show signs of rust. I can still do my part to keep it on the road longer by uh, not driving it from like November 1st to May 1st. It's kind of weird in closing because um, this year, so the last 12 calendar months, I've put 7,000 miles on my Golf R. Um, 6,000 of those miles <laughs> were during the winter months. I, I looked up my uh, trip logs today. We're during the winter months. So feasibly, if the Ford Escape works out long-term and I continue to love motorcycling as much as I do, it would mean that the Golf R accru accrues a thousand miles a year of actual driving um, indefinitely until I decide to sell it or uh, turn it into like a track car or something. So that's pretty cool. So I've got, I've got a car now that I can put a thousand miles a year on um, and keep it in this shape forever, hopefully. Um, I love the Golf R a lot, and I want to keep it for a long time, so that's really, really good news for me to keep that under a 1,000 miles a year. So in, uh, you know, in 10 years, it has 50K on it. Um, wishful thinking. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the long, rambling video. Most of you closed the window by now. Those of you stuck around, I appreciate it. And uh, hooray for having a winter beater. Everyone should get one, especially if you're into like automotive enthusiasts or motorcycle enthusiasts. You should have a shit box, a Kano box that you can just putz around in. Um, I know that, you know, that's probably talking as like a, you know, a one percenter. Um, but it's nice if you can afford to. And I think most people that are in motorcycling uh, either have a shitty car when they can't ride or um, they have a nice car and a motorcycle like I used to have. But if you can come across the money to, uh, I mean, if you can buy... $2,000 clear water lights and $1,000 motorcycle seats and $5,000 suspension for your bike, you can afford to get a winter beater, and I'm no exception to that. I should have done this a long time ago. Okay, everyone, Heather's going to be home soon. I'm going to start uh, cleaning house and getting things pretty in here. Have a great evening. Happy winter, and uh, see you later.